Hello guys, in this chapter we are doing, going to do the basic lighting and basic render setup for our scene so that we can start testing as well as start working on our materials to make our scene look beautiful. So let's just start, get right into it. First thing I am going to unhide all the walls that we have. The, that are already in the scene and let's just go ahead and hide the background image plane that we had created previous, previously. We are going to use this image plane later but for now let's just hide this. As you can see we had the walls, the ceiling and the furniture. Now let's just do the basic render setup. We'll go inside a render setup. In the render setup, in the common tab, first thing that we want to do is reduce the height and width of the resolution because we are going to test the rendering again and again and we do not want such a big resolution for testing purpose and it is, which is going to take a lot of time to render every single time. So I'm going to put 1200 by 800 by default for the testing purpose so it is visible and we can make changes according as, as and how we proceed. Now let's just go ahead and uh, go inside the V-Ray tab. Here in the inside image sampler we are going to do bucket. Okay. Inside bucket image sampler Let's just put 24 as bucket width and height. And inside environment, we are not going to do anything as of now. Inside GI tab, let's just change the brute force to irradiance map. We are going to use ambient occlusion later. Inside irradiance map, in the current preset, let's choose low. Click on the default. In the advanced tab, choose so show direct light. Inside the light, light cache, we are not going to change anything. Let's go to the settings tab. Here, we can keep it triangular, triangulation or anything else, whatever you're comfortable, spiral or left to right. I'm going to choose top to bottom. In dynamic memory limit, we are going to keep it as zero. Inside the render elements tab, we are not going to add anything over here right now. Once we are okay with the entire scene lighting and the basic materials, then we will add render elements for the final render. But for now, we are not going to do anything in this tab. Now let's just go ahead and render and see how the image looks like. Remember that we have not added any lights. This is just a basic render setup. Okay, the render is over and as you can see, the entire scene is black. There's only one light that is actually our television light over here, which we can actually turn it off later. But as you can see, our entire scene is black. So because there are no other lights inside the scene. So let's just add this to our history and we will we can mark the progress as in how we go ahead okay so let's go ahead and turn off the blue light that is from the television and then we will start working on the on our on our walls and everything with a light with lighting setup as well so i'm going to choose this light let's go to the lights and select the light and we will turn in the turn this off for the moment so that there are no lights inside the scene. Okay. 
now what we are going to do is uh, add the image at this image inside our environment so that it our environment starts to throw these colors inside our scene so let's just go ahead and do that first i'm going to go into the perspective as you can see we have we do not have any walls on this side and this side so the light once we put this image inside the environment it is going to start to fill the colors of the environment image from this open areas where there is no wall or no blocking done so let's go ahead and add the image inside our environment in this slot i'm going to click on get material inside the map slot i'm going to choose bitmap and choose the image as a background here inside the coordinates i'm going to make click on environment select environment and inside the screen i'm going to select spherical now i'm going to use this image inside our environment slot inside the environment i'm going to enable this environment gi environment and drag the drag the bitmap inside no map make it instance and click okay now let's just go ahead and see how this looks like inside the camera go to render setup and click render Okay, the render is finished right now and as you can see our our scene is already lit up because of the image that we have used inside the environment and you can also see over here we are we can see the light coming from this side where there is no wall blocking inside the scene and also from this side the wall is coming from this side where there is no wall blocking this uh, technique helps us fill the image with environment light without actually putting vray lights or vray plane light or inside the scene this can be used as a very good fill light for our scene so let's just go ahead and save this image so pre previously we had and completely black just by adding the environment light we have this we are here at this render so now let's just go ahead and add some matte material to our walls to flooring and to ceiling so that we can see only the furniture and how to use it okay let's just go ahead and create a create a matte material from the wall here and here so in the walls i'm going to click v-ray and here i'm going to choose inside the v-ray i'm going to choose v-ray material wrapper click ok replace material i'm going to choose keep old material as sub material and press ok now inside the base material you can already see the walls is already as a base material okay so here inside the matte properties i'm going to click matte surface and inside the alpha contribution i'm going to click minus one okay same i'm going to create another material for ceiling go to the material wrapper keep the old material 
and max surface minus 1. Now again I am going to select this floor material, click on V-Ray, select V-Ray material wrapper, click OK, keep the old material as sub material and inside the matte surface click matte surface and alpha contribution as minus 1. Now let's go ahead and render our image. Okay, the render is finished right now. As you can see, in this render we cannot see the walls, the ceiling as well as the flooring. But we can only see the furniture that we have placed. This is because we have applied the matte material to the ceiling, walls and our flooring. But inside the alpha, you can see everything as everything as black but the furniture is white. This is going to, this we are, we can use this alpha inside Photoshop to select our furniture in post-production. So this is going to help us later once we do final render. But right now we have to, we need to have a background and we also need to have the shadows. So let's just on the background and see how it looks. For that, I'm going to go to the rendering and inside environment. I can also press 8. Now, in this environments tab, I'm going to drag this image. I'm going to first create the same image, get material in the bitmap, choose the same image that we are using as a background press open now inside this slot i'm going to choose from texture to environment here i'm not going to change this i'm going to creep it as green and change the filter to some area because we do not want it to be blurry now i'm going to drag this image inside the environment slot And keep it as an instance and press ok close the environment and effect and now let's just see how this looks like ok the render is finished now you can see that we have the image plane inside our background and the furniture is placed in front of the background image. Let's just save this image so that we can use it for our progress. Okay. Now we are going to add lights to the scene. But before we go ahead and add lights to the scene, we need to understand how the original image is lit. So let's just go ahead and open the image. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have two light sources inside this image. One light source that is coming from the ceiling fan and another which is closer to the fireplace. The intensity of these both light sources is almost same. And apart from this, there is natural light coming from the door and the window inside our scene. But this is the secondary light. This is not affecting the entire scene as much as these two lights are affecting our scene. So these two lights will be our primary lights and the light coming from the environment and through the window and the wall, window and the door will be our secondary lights. So let's just go ahead and start adding lights into our scene. So the first light that I'm going to add is the ceiling fan light and see how it looks like and then I'm going to add the second light and then later the 
environment or the outdoor light from the window and the door so for this i'm going to select the ceiling and go inside lights choose vray select the light drag it on the floor or inside the type i'm going to select disk because it's the circular light disk light i'm going to click and drag a disk over here and I'm going to place it approximately close to our fan. Let's go into the top view. So our ceiling fan is somewhere in the center. probably here okay now I'm going to drag this down to match the position of the light something here okay and I'm going to scale this or enlarge on this to match our silly you don't have to be exact you don't have to be exact but you can proportionately close to it so as you can see we have placed a light inside our scene and uh, let's unhide the ceiling so we have the ceiling here the light here and uh, now let's just uh, make it a warm light because this is a warm light I'm going to go inside temperature and make it a 4500-4500 temperature Kelvin and let's just render and see this now the multiplier is 30 we will see how much we need to increase the multiplier but before that let's just go ahead and render it okay the render is finished now as you can see there's not much difference from the render before and now let's just save this into history and compare so previous one is rendered like this and then now there's a little bit of light happening over here but it is not much as you can see so we need to increase the intensity of the light that we have placed considerably so let's go ahead and increase the intensity so that we have we can get the light amount of light that we need inside the scene from the from our primary light so i'm just going to go ahead and put let's say 500 and inside inside this i'm going to go ahead inside the sampling i'm going to create okay maybe later so let's just render this again and see how it looks like okay the render is finished right now and you can see right now that we have enough light that is fall falling on our furniture from this light source and uh, it's looking pretty good now let's just save this image and compare with the old one the previous one was this and after increasing the intensity of the light it is looking something like this which is good now the problem with this is as you can see the light source is there but we do not see any shadows on the wall as well as the flooring but we can see the shadows onto our rug here you can see shadows happening on the rug but you do not see any shadows on the floor whatsoever or also on the wall as as well 
so we need to add shadows to our scene the reason this is not happening is because we need to enable the shadows inside our matte matte material so let's just go ahead and do that go to the material editor inside all these matte materials that we created the wall the floor the ceiling let's go to the walls material inside the walls material wrapper we have to enable the shadows let's just click on this and enable the shadows also similarly for the flooring we are going to enable the shadows as well close this for the ceiling we do not need to enable the shadows because nothing no shadows are going to fall onto the ceiling now inside the light go to the options go to the sampling and inside the shadow bias we are going to make this as 0 0.002 meters this is going to help us with the contact shadows that we need inside the scene so now let's just go ahead and render and see how whether we get the shadows or not okay the render is finished right now and you can clearly see that we have shadows happening on the wall as well as on the flooring and also on the wall as well so let's just add this light and later we can add this these two lights to light to light our lit light our scene but before that as you can see our artwork is not closer to our wall so we can fix that as well as we might have to create this wall this brick wall that is coming ahead of the main wall so that we are in the right position correct position for this particular accessories so let's just go ahead and do that first and then we will add the light light scene light inside the scene and see how this looks like inside the top view i'm going to drag it closer to the wall and also i'm going to drag this closer to the wall as well now as you can see i will have to create a box over here and see how this can help us with the fire block let's just say fire block and convert to editable poly select the vertex drag it till the top and adjust it with the fireplace i'm going to hide this and let's say object properties and see through okay so that i can see the wall behind it select the vertex and match with the i want to now i want to match the thickness of the wall is not too much i guess something like this so now let's just place this tv and everything accordingly mm. 
inside wall so we have this wall and and then we have this placement furniture that is going to come ahead of this and then we have the tv so the group close this and also place it in front of the wall something like this and then we will adjust this accordingly again so i think so i'm going to center this a little bit just a little bit and unhide it the box flyer block and also add the same wall color material to the fire block as well so let's apply that and unhide the wall as well let's just now that we have placed everything now let's just copy this light to the to match with our make it copy and place it approximately because this is this is this was a this was a ceiling light and this was not very close to the ceiling first we need to make it closer to the ceiling and then we will place it as per the position which is actually closer to the and we might take it down a little bit and increase the diameter to match somewhere closer to our light in the reference okay the radius is 1.5 here the radius is 1 and here is 0.15 so this matches our scene light so let's just keep this like this and unhide the ceiling and see how our render looks like now we have intensity of uh, 500 over here and also the intensity of this is 500 so i think it's going to be a bit brighter so we might have to reduce the intensity later but for now let's just go ahead and see how it looks like and then we can reduce it once we come to know how much we need to reduce okay the render is finished right now and as you can see this is too much of light inside our scene there there are a few burnout areas over here as well as here and also on the coffee table you can see a lot of burnout happening so we need to reduce the light intensity for both the lights in order to balance the overall lighting inside the scene so the previous uh, intensity of this light was 500 which was pretty okay so we are going to bring the total intensity of both the lights somewhere around 500 so this as this light is very closer to this wall let's make this as a 200 and keep this as a 300 let's go ahead and do that and see how it looks like so here i'm going to put 200 and this is going to be 300 And see how this looks like let's say this and then render this okay 
I stop the render because I can see still some burnouts happening over here. So we need to reduce the intensity of this light more. Let's keep this as 100 and see how this looks like. Let's just render a, a region. This looks good, so let's keep it 100 and keep this as 300 and see how this scene looks like. Okay, the render is finished right now and you can see that we have two light sources in the scene and looks pretty good to me there are no burnouts happening anywhere it's very subtle and these two lights looks the scene lit up with these two lights looks pretty good so now let's just go ahead and add two video lights from the door and the window with a nice soft light coming from outside and see how the scene looks like I'm going to go into the lights, create video light and make a plain light inside the front view where there is an opening over here. I'm going to drag this, create plain video light. Now let's just go ahead and render and see how this looks like. First I'm going to adjust the width and the height to match with the opening. Now let's just see ahead and go ahead and see how this light affects our scene and uh, we are going to use the temperature as 600 6500 6, multiply as 30 and we will see whether we want to reduce it or to increase it okay render as you can see this light is getting burned out a little bit over here so we may have to reduce the intensity of the light. Okay, the render is finished right now. And you can see our scene is lit up from this light. But as you can see, there's a lot of light that is coming in, which is not matching with our background. So the light coming from this image plane is too much as compared to the light that is inside our image reference but you can see clearly that we have nice soft shadows everywhere which is good but we definitely need to reduce the intensity of the light and we have some burnout or reflection happening over here that we need to take care of also so first reduce the let's in, reduce the intensity of the light and add one more light over here and then we see how it looks like and then we will fix whatever needs to be done so here i think so we need to reduce the intensity to half let's just say 15 copy this image and place it to the window i'm going to say copy and Let's place this to window and increase the height and width 
to match other window. So now let's just go ahead and render the image and see how it looks like. Let's first render the patch. So we know that is looking good. Let's render this much so that we can see the shadows and everything and also the lighting. Well, the, re the render is over now. I think so we can reduce it a little bit more and make it invisible so that we do not see it inside inside the render. So let's just go ahead and reduce this to 10 and also this to 10 and render the entire image and see how it looks like. Before that, let's just uh, make them invisible as well. So, in the options, make it invisible and then make this invisible and also these disk lights also invisible. And let's just go ahead and render them so we can see how they look like okay the render is finished right now so let's just analyze how it looks like the first thing that i think that the intensity of this light is still more so we need to reduce this a little bit so that we don't get any burnouts over here so we will reduce the intensity of this light the second thing is uh, because of this light we are having a nice highlight over here which is good but our plant is getting much lit as compared to the scene from the environment let me just show you what i mean Let's just save this inside the render. As you can see previously, this was the previous render. And now here you can see on the chair, because there was no light over here, the main source of light was coming from our ceiling light or the fan ceiling fan light. Now, because we have added the light from here, you will see a nice highlight that is happening on the wall and uh, on the chair, as well as our plant is also lit from the background light like this so here we have a nice light but this is also very much as compared to the light that is coming from outside and also the plant is getting lit too much because of the image plane so we need to reduce the light of the image plane as well so i'm going to reduce the light of this intensity of this light as well as the intensity of this light and we need to make this light a little bit bluer because there's too much of blue happening over here so that we can see the blue a little bit of blue inside our scene as well now the third problem that i see over here is the reflection as you can see inside the coffee coffee table and the glass the reflection of the light vita light is visible and the reflection of door is not visible over here you can see the vita plane reflection but instead of this video plane reflection, we should be able, we should be able to see the reflection of the door over here. Same, similarly over here, we should be able to see the reflection of the window over here. So we need to fix that also. So let's just first go ahead and reduce the intensity and then fix the reflection in the scene as well. So select the light and I'm going to make this as 50 and let's just go ahead and render the patch and see how it looks like so 
so this still looks dull so let's just go ahead and say 70 I think this looks good because there are no many, not much burnouts on the metal as well. So we will keep 70 for this and then let's just fix this light over here. Reduce the intensity of this light. Let's just say 5 and change the temperature to 7000 or maybe 8000. Okay. And see how this looks like. This looks good, I think so. And we have a natural feeling of the light that is coming from behind. Plus we have this highlight, not too strong. Even our planter looks very subtle and natural. Yes, and, and the intensity on the, of the reflection is also reduced over here. So this looks good, very natural. So now let's just deal with the problem of reflection. The first thing we need to do is turn the reflection off of this switch off the reflection and switch off the reflection of the light. Once we do this, let's just render and see how it looks like. Turn off, reduce the shadow bias and shadow bias is two. Okay, so we have the reflection switched off for this as well as for this and see how this looks like. Okay, and this is odd. Mm. Now, let's just turn off the light and see how it looks like. If we are missing something, turn this off, turn this off. I'm going to hide this wall so that I can see the correct reflection. Let's see. And what I'm able to see in this, so we know what is happening. So let's just go ahead and render this one. Okay. So as you can see, when I turn off the light, the reflection is gone. Let's turn this on again. So turn it on. But our reflection is off so this should not be a problem we still have so i think so we should turn off the specular and see if this resolves it yes so now that you can see that we do not have the reflection of the light coming in but the big problem with this is we also do not get the specular so we need the specular of the light to highlight everything because here you can see the specular on the face 
and uh, console is there but if i render this it will just disappear it's still working so let's just try this hand of the man because we can see some highlights over here So definitely the highlights are gone I think let's just start uh, like turn on the specular and see how this looks like So definitely you can see the, the highlights on the hand once you start the specular as well. So we need the specular that is coming from this but we don't want the reflection to affect our coffee table as well. So how do we fix this? So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select this material. I think so we will do this in once we start working on the materials of this because it is very clear that this uh, it's getting reflected and this is because of the specular of the light and not because of the reflection of the light. So we can deal with this inside the material. And once you start working with the material so I'm just going to say unhide by name and unhide the wall and let's render the entire image once so we know how it looks like and then okay the image is rendered now as you can see the lighting looks very good and uh, everything looks uh, as per natural lighting and it's very difficult to say that uh, there is something wrong with the furniture or or the way it is lit because it looks like uh, the furniture is actually inside this room however obviously it is 3d and we are going to enhance this further by changing most of the material and making it look more attractive fixing the materials adding uh, the elements that are missing over here and we may may or may not change few elements depending depending on what looks good for the final touch that is all for this chapter in the next chapter we are going to change most of the material and the color scheme to make this image look good so i will see you in the next chapter before this so let's just compare the lighting that we did from the beginning to the end let's just save this so this is where we started and this is how it looks now or probably you can also select this as as the beginning reference where there was no lights 
just the light from the environment no shadows nothing to to this in the next chapter we are going to change the material for the furniture we are going to finalize the reference for the color scheme and uh, the material that that needs to be used and uh, change the overall color scheme to make it look really beautiful so that it looks it pops out from the background and looks good so in the i'll see you in the next chapter where we are going to change the material for the furniture of the scene